welcome friends this is Parthish and again we are in the session of control systems this is the third session in the continuation and let us classify the control systems so today's layout of the session is how the control system can be classified so it can be classified in different groups say distributed parameter system and lumped parameter system stochastic versus deterministic system discrete time versus continuous time system time varying versus time invariant system and nonlinear versus linear system so by the end we'll see how we are arriving at the point where we can say that the entire course is about the linear time invariant systems and the designs related to this domain so let us start the classification of control systems so we can say that the classes of control systems are like this say we have the classes we can define it in a block so we start with the classes of control systems so starting with this the first discrimination is how a control system is seen as a distributed parameter system or a lumped parameter system so we can say that the two different groups in which it can be categorized in the beginning itself is the distributed parameter the distributed parameter and the lumped parameter so here you can see the other one is the lumped parameter so we have lumped parameter over here lumped parameter so let us see what are these two things so again i will say that we will not be going for distributed parameters because eventually we will decide that we will go for lumped parameter design what is the distributed parameter system a system can be defined as a distributed parameter system when the different control units of the system are at very long distance separated working individually but they are synchronized through a common control signal through a supervisory through a supervisory center and uh, these individual control units are at so long distances that they are separated in time delays so parameters are distributed so we cannot unify such system so we can say that such systems are many times represented by the partial differential equation form like I can say that this is the f of x y divided by the x plus the f of x y equals to the y so these are two independent variables f and uh, x and y on which f is dependent so this is equal to maybe some other derivative so it may be the double derivative say dot 2 f at x y divided by dot 2 x square or even you can add some forcing function the f of x y Uh, divided by the so dot to f of x y divided by the y square plus some forcing function u of x y like this that we can define it actually the system in which we have say that this is a con distributed parameter control system so we have different control units and at long distances so we are basically seeing it as a system in which the parameters cannot be combined together to represent it as a single unit system but it is a distributed unit system 
so we here we have the distance distance and the delay on the other hand the lumpet parameter network you can the complete system you can define as a single unit so a very big unit even it can be defined as a single unit g is a single unit a function of a single unit g at t is defined where you are giving some input maybe u at t and you are getting some output y at t so this is a lumpet parameter system in which the complete system is seen as a single whole unit so how we can compare these two different kind of control systems first there is uh, in distributed parameters there is delay and it has distance so distance and delay and delay here you don't have any delay so this is a single unit you can represent it as a single unit single unit so eventually we will go for this lumpet parameter systems while in our course we will not go for distributed parameter system so the next one is once we are uh, de deciding upon the system as a lumpet parameter system let us check lumpet parameter system is our choice for the ease of use of different mathematical tools then this can be divided into two parts the stochastic and the deterministic so again stochastic system pertains to the systems in which we are having the output but we don't have the clear reason what are the various causes and inputs to the system so this is stochastic this is stochastic also called probabilistic and the other one is deterministic so we can determine the exact behavior of the system from its input output values deterministic so that is why the deterministic system so let us see an example of a stochastic system how we have discussed in earlier sessions that our rainfall happens certain place at during certain time every year around the same time with the same similar statistics so there is some cause somewhere due to which it is raining with some statistics but we don't know the exact cause so such systems are probabilistic system and we classify a stochastic system and different control mathematics is used for that on the other hand if you go for deterministic system you have the uh, input to the system so here you can say that there is input to the system the power supply you have the power supply suppose this is ac power ac single phase 240 volt supply is there suppose you are providing ac single phase 240 volt ac supply is 50 hertz to your ceiling fan you can control it using a on off switch with on off switch you can control so this this point is the input point to the system and this revolution in rpm fans are known for rpm because they run at fixed speed according to the supply voltage provided so your input is the supply voltage through on of a switch and output is the rpm so in between the fan is a model which can be represented as a single unit so fan i can represent as a single unit i am representing it as g at t then output yt is there output yt will be seen as the rpm this is the revolution per minute and here is the input so this is the input to the system this is the voltage right so what are the things to compare in between these two we can say here input is not known input is not known while in the case of deterministic system the input and output are known 
So both the, with both the cases we can model the system, but the mathematics a theory used is little different because in the former case the inputs are not known, only the results are there from which we determine the input or we, we can predict the input. So again we will go for deterministic in our case in the syllabus and we will not go for the stochastic systems. So once we have determined that we will go for the deterministic system, so let us again define it as deterministic deterministic system which will again be classified into two parts that is the discrete time we have discrete time and continuous time so discrete time and continuous time are two different classes of deterministic system how we can define a discrete time system where a system is basically defined as an input which is coming suppose this is an input and for which different outputs can be seen so when we speak about the different outputs we see that these are in sampling situations so I can take the time as time t equals to kt suppose you take k equal to 1 2 3 like that up to some value n okay and t suppose you take t equals to 1 then what we can say that there are different instants say t equals to 1 t equals to 2 t equals to 3 t equals to 4 so for such instance we record the output output can be any value you can see that output can be of any value right so this is a discrete time system in which at different or uh, specific sampling instance we record the output for even a continuous input so here you have both the outputs and inputs compared at the same uh, y-axis input as well as the output you are comparing over here while in continuous time system you will see that once you give input to the system then you can say that the output can also appear in continuous time so I am drawing it again on the scale on which output t is continuous so here I am giving the input and the output is recorded like this so here we have the input and output but output can be recorded in continuity so in our case we'll see that more or less the studies are limited to the continuous time domain because in discrete time we have outputs at certain instants output at specific instants specific instance while we have the inputs and outputs both continuous in continuous time here continuous input and output so in this case in the case of discrete time we can see the examples where the differential equation form is like this k minus 1 plus x k minus 2 is equal to some input u at k but here in continuous time we have d by uh, dt of x plus x equals to some u like that u at t here it is in continuous time it is u at t in discrete time it is u at k but again we will go for the continuous time system and we will not opt for the discrete time system in our syllabus so once we decided that we will go for the continuous type continuous time system so we can again classify further into time varying and time invariant so this is continuous time this is continuous time so we are classifying it again into two parts 
the continuous time and discrete time so you can see that this is uh, discrete time is not taken so we are taking continuous time so this is giving us time varying time varying and time invariant time invariant so again our case has two different classes to choice from so we will see what is time varying so in the in this time varying type of systems we have the system behavior that changes over time suppose you are having a dc motor and you are running it for 20 years after 20 years you will see the gain of the system has changed the starting torque has changed the running current has changed like this so in uh, time varying system if you uh, show it through some differential equations of dx by dt a coefficient some some coefficient suppose a naught i am taking plus a1 x equals to b naught u in this case you will see that this coefficients are changing with time right this coefficient will change with time in the case of time varying but when you take the case of time invariant system this coefficient will be constants the parameters parameters or coefficients coefficients will be constant over time will be constant over time, over time. so in our choice time varying has time varying system parameters time varying system parameters and in time invariant case we have the constant coefficient systems we have constant coefficient systems so the same differential equation can be shown with all the coefficients uh, either uh, zero or constant so in our case this is the choice that we will go for the time invariant system so once we decide for the time invariant system let us define it like this we are defining it as time invariant system as our choice time invariant system as our choice so we have to classify it as nonlinear or linear system so we have nonlinear nonlinear and we have the linear system we have the linear system linear system so how you can see you the same thing is that a system in which the inputs and outputs are linearly connected are linear system where the systems in which inputs and outputs are not linearly connected so what is the meaning of not linearly connected so one simple example is that if you take the mathematical model then you will find that uh, the differential equation model will have the coefficients which are uh, not just constants or uh, functions of independent variable but they are also the functions of other variables so in terms of differential equation you can say that uh, the coefficients can be observed to define the system as nonlinear or linear and in practice you will say that the system will behave nonlinearly for certain input values so over a time if you give, change the input the output will not change uh, through a linear function so suppose I am giving an input to a system suppose this is a system and I am giving an input like this so you can see that the output may change abruptly in a different fashion like your output has changed and this is going somewhere like this so this is definitely a nonlinear system on the other hand suppose if you take a system which in which you give the input like this I'm giving the input like this this is the input and I am seeing how the output is changing in a nonlinear in a linear case will be exactly a linear definition maybe this may be something like this so here you can see that suppose your input is 
u is a function of t is constant here in this case this is a constant this is the value of c here you can see the value c the constant but output how the output is behaving y is a function equal to c into time t so this is a linear function so again we'll compare a linear system first it can be observed or verified through is coefficients of the mathematical model coefficients coefficients of the mathematical model are dependent on dependent on variables variables other than these are other than then constant or time or time but in the case of linear systems you will see that the coefficients are function of coefficients are functions of time that is an independent variable or constant so again our choice in this case our choice will be definitely going to be the linear systems so then we should decide how we want to define the flow diagram of the selection of the systems in this case so we can say that we start with the classes of systems so once we start with the classes of systems classes of systems this is divided into two parts that is the lumped parameter this is lumped parameter and the other one is your distributed parameter we can say distributed distributed parameter so here i am selecting the lumped parameter so i write here lumped parameter and it is classified further into stochastic stochastic and in our case our choice is deterministic deterministic so again from deterministic once we cho have chosen deterministic we'll see that the other option next is the discrete time discrete time and here you have the continuous time actually you will get the continuous time so again once we choose the continuous time we will see that we have time invariant and time varying so we have time invariant and the other option is time varying you can draw here time varying which is not our choice because the mathematics used will be different so once we choose the time invariant the next option is whether it is linear or nonlinear so i am writing nonlinear over here on the left side nonlinear nonlinear and on the right side we define the linear systems linear systems so exactly from the linear systems finally we obtained the linear time invariant system so once we obtain the linear time invariant system we can say that we have chosen the classes of systems from the beginning we can see i am showing it by red mark classes of systems lumped parameter deterministic continuous time time invariant linear time invariant that linear then ultimately we are coming to this point right 
so this is how we are resorting upon the linear time invariant system because once we resort upon a particular type of system we can go for further mathematics so eventually what is a linear time invariant system a system which can be represented in this form a naught uh, dn y as a function of time divided by dt power n plus a1 dn minus 1 y as a function of time divided by dt power n minus 1 up to a n y as a function of time equals to b naught x suppose i take a system with x as the input variable so uh, d power m dt power m x is the function of time plus b1 d power m minus 1 by dt power m minus 1 x as a function of time up to bm x as a function of time this is for the case where i have a system gt and where input is xt and output is yt so once we have selected the system as linear time invariant we can go for the all linear domain mathematics that will uh, very honestly follow the principle of superposition and homogeneity as well as the laplace domain so for today this much is the information and in the coming session we will study the laplace domain as well as different aspects of the control system. Thanks for listening.